Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to cover how to combine multiple tabs in Microsoft Excel. Uh, so I have this uh, workbook. I have three tabs, partial data one, some data here, partial data two, some data here, and partial data three, some data here. What I'm going to cover is how to combine all of these to a master sheet. And there is also going to be a lot of related stuff. So we'll talk about what table objects are in Excel and what they're used for. Now, to be able to actually do this, you're going to need something that's called Power Query. Now, Power Query is included in uh, Microsoft Excel 2016 version and on. And you're going to find it in your data tab. But if you have 2013 or you have 2010 version, this one is not 2016, it's not here actually. So you will have to add Power Query as an add-on. To add as an add-on, uh, you'll have to go to Microsoft website and find Microsoft Power Query for Excel and download it and install it on your machine. So if you have a 32-bit version Excel, do the 32-bit version. Otherwise, use the 64-bit version. Download, install, restart your Excel to make sure you have the tool. So once you have it all installed and done, you should see a new tab that shows up right here, Power Query, right here on top in Excel. And that's what we're going to use to combine our data from multiple tabs. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about before I even get to this is how we use tables and what tables are for. So if you go to insert tab in Excel, there is this thing that's called a table. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is first convert all of my three tabs of this data to an actual table. And I'll explain you what tables are for a second on a separate tab, just quickly to explain you what's going on with tables. So uh, with tables, basically we're going to have this situation. So let's say we have a table and we have two things. We have the name and a price. This is our table and here we have product, some products, product one. I'll do product two, product three. And we have some prices for this product. This is what we have. This is our regular data. Now, what is the problem with this particular type of data is that if I go ahead and hit create a sum and create a sum of all of this right here, hit enter, I'm going to get the total, which is however much this is. Now, if I decide I'm gonna add another product, I'll just do this to make this faster. And I'm gonna do this product about $500. Now this total, it does not include that 500. So to update that, I'm gonna have to go back and update this range to include that new cell in it, enter. So to avoid this problem, you use something that's called a table in Microsoft Excel. So first I'm going to highlight this. I'm gonna go under insert and table and see it highlights this table and it says my table has headers and headers is basically just labels on top. So it does, I'm gonna hit okay. So we convert that to a table. Now tables, most of the people I guess think this is for pretty formatting, but it's not. So if you don't like this formatting, you can go on top here and under this design, when you're clicked on your table under design, you can open this and switch it to like this light formatting, remove this fil filter rows, uh, and then it's kind of going to look like your regular data set. But the difference of this and the regular data set is if I go ahead and add yet another product here and decide, well, this product costs, so this is 1681, right? $400. Now that should be about $2,000 and some change, right? So there it is. See, now it's automatically updated right here because this is a table my data is going to automatically update so tables are like expandable ranges they will automatically update your formulas because you're using the tables and expand to a new range so 
every new row you add, it's automatically a part of that table and it's gonna be now adjusted in all of our formulas. So another product, right? This is another, let's say 500 and there it is. We got the price, we got 100. So every time I add a new number, that's gonna be adjusted and my formula is gonna include the new numbers. And that's why we use tables. Now, uh, there are a couple of reasons we're going to use tables uh, in this particular case. One of the reasons is because as we're adding new data, we're gonna want that to be included in our master tab, right? That's one reason. So I'm gonna delete this tab. Maybe just create a blank one here. So the second reason is for our Power Query to actually recognize these data tables, we need to convert them to tables. So the first thing I'm going to do, go to this partial data one tab. I'm going to highlight the table or you can just click inside of it. Both will work. If you want to be safe, highlight your entire table. I'm going to go insert table. Now it's going to ask me, does it have headers? I'm going to say, okay, it does. Now when you make your tables in this design tab, there is this name of the table. Now you can see that this table that I've made is named table two. So you can rename this to make them easier to remember and know which table is which. So I'm just gonna call this part one, hit enter. That's the name of my first table. I'm gonna move to the second one. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Insert table, okay. This is going to be my part two. I'm gonna move to the third one highlight my table, insert table. It does have headers, okay. I'm gonna call this one part three. So basically you want to call this something that you want to remember and it's easy for you to kind of refer to that table later on. So now I have three tables, part one, part two, and part three, which are expandable tables. Now, what I want to do, I want to combine them on a new tab, which is gonna be my master sheet. So to get to it, I'm gonna start using this Power Query. So I'm gonna go here, here we are. And what I want to do, I want to use a table for this. So I'm gonna click start with my partial data one, click on this table, it's good enough. And I'm gonna click on this from table right here in my power query tab from table that's gonna lead us to this editor that we have that included that table in this window right so what i'm going to do is uh, i want to add more data below this table and then again and then again and then again right so uh what i'm gonna do to make my life easier I'm gonna go on top here, right under the home tab, and you're gonna see this something that's called append right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this append option. And it's gonna tell me, what do you want to append? So if I open this, I will see that the only table that I actually see is that part one. I don't see the part two and part three. But the only reason I'm doing this, it's gonna add a line for us that it's gonna be easier for us to modify rather than remembering the whole line because I assume if you're watching this video, you don't know a lot about the M language, which is what's being used in this Power Query editor. So I'm gonna just say, okay, let's just append the same thing, right? So I'm gonna choose the same table, hit okay. And what's going to happen, we're basically duplicating the same thing because I just appended the same table in the bottom of the same table, which really doesn't make any sense unless you want to make a duplicate copy of your same table. But now we're gonna do some changes to what it actually did. So in this tool, there is an advanced editor. It's right here on top under home tab. See, there is like below properties, advanced editor. I'm gonna go ahead and open this and this is gonna be our uh, editor where we can actually write our language. So this uh, editor is kind of confusing when you're first getting to it because it's another language of its own, but it kind of has this idea of 
uh, storing our steps in variables and then using those variables later on. So basically everything in this let portion that we get here are the steps that we're performing one by one. And then in this in statement, basically you want to say what do you want returned in the end. So if I wanted to explain you what's going on here, basically in this let statement, the first thing that we see here, it says that if in Excel from the current workbook, we want to find the table called part one. And we're gonna grab the content of that table. And once we get that, we're gonna assign this to this variable called source. That's what we're doing right here. And then we do a comma, which moves us to basically our next statement that right now is on the second line, right? So after the comma is our second statement. So now we have this source, which is basically gonna grab the part one table and put it in this variable called source. Now here we're gonna do this table combine command and you can see that it's combining the source, which is the variable we have here, right? Which is our data is gonna be, and comma source, which is we're combining the source with the source. So the same table with the same table, pretty much. So we're combining those two together here and that combined data is being saved in this variable called append and then that's really our last step. We just need this append as an end result in this case. And the in is where we just return that variable, meaning that final result of combined tables, which is really the same table combined to the same table. So now we'll have to change this a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually add a couple of lines here. I'm going to copy this particular line right here. And I'll just paste it once and I'm going to paste it again. So I am copying the same exact line that I had, which the line itself was just getting the table part one and assigning it to a variable. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have three variables for each table. I'm going to say source one, which is our first table, is gonna be the part one table. Then I'm gonna say source two, which would be now a different variable, is gonna go get this table called if you remember, I named it part two. So if you had a different name for that table, you just put that name here, right? And finally, the source three is gonna be part three of this table. So I have part one, part two, and part three, right? So now I want to take all these three sources that I have from three different tabs. Obviously, if you have more, keep copying this more times and do all the tabs you need. So I have source three, source one, source two, I need to combine them. So I'm going to go in this combine statement. I'm going to say, let's combine source one, comma, source two, comma, source three. And if we have more with comma, source four, source five, source six, I hope you get the idea. So that's going to combine all those three tabs and save that in this variable called append. And then in the end, we're going to give it as a result to return that append. So we've modified the statement a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and click done. And that should do it. So right now I should have all those three tables combined. So as you can see, it looks like I have what about like 40 records or so. So that's gonna be our results table that we need. Now we want to load this back to Excel as a result table, right? So I'm gonna go here on top left. I'm gonna say close and load to. And I'm gonna say close and load to. And where do we want to place this? So it says, well, we're gonna put it in a table. So that sounds good. So we want to put it in a table. Now I would like to put it on the sheet two that I have. So I'm going to say existing worksheet and I'm gonna go to this button right here and I go to sheet two, click on A1 cell. I want it to start right there to load my data. So that's fine. I'll go ahead and hit okay. And that's where it's gonna load it. I'm fine with that. I'm gonna click load. So that should grab all that data and bring it here, all of them combined. 
Now, first of all, let's make sure that this is accurate. So it says we combined have 41 rows and the top one is the labels. So basically we ended up with 40 lines of data right here. So I'm going to go here. So how many I have here? So not including the labels, I got 14. Then I have another 14. So that makes it 28, right? And then I have what? Another 12. So there it is. So that's 40. So which is exactly what we have right here. So we were able to combine. So it's 41 and then the label, right? So 40. So we're able to combine all of those. So this should be really be dates. I'm going to do home and just switch it to date for now. Uh, this should really be done in the actual query window, but I did it here. Actually, I'm going to just undo this and do it the right way. So for example, these dates didn't show up as dates. Let's make them actual dates, but we're not going to do it here. We're going to adjust the actual uh, query that we ran. So if you look here, I have it here on the right. That was what was creating this combined table. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go ahead and add it. So I'm going to get back to this and I want to make sure that this is formatted as a date. So the data type, instead of any, I'll go ahead and use date. Okay, so now these are dates. I'm gonna go do close and load, close and load. And that should get us back now with dates with our correct formatting. So that looks good. Now these are dates and this is our data. We have 40. Now the only problem with doing this is that it's not actually automatically refreshing. So what do I mean by that? If I go to partial data one and decide to add another row to this, so I'm going to add something that we can spot right away. So I'll do one, one, 2017. And I say, I don't know, Brian something. And that's going to be in our Western region. It's good enough. Some brand. And we'll put a large number here so we can find it quickly. 20,000. And then cost of goods. So I don't know. So doesn't matter. So if I go back, I've just added this extra row. So now we should have 41 records, but you can see that it says 41. It should have been 42 because 41 including the top, right? So you'll have to go here and click on this refresh to actually get the updates from those tabs. So you can see how it says 41 rows loaded. It's already showing that it's loaded. So now we should find, see that's that Brian record that we got from that table. So, so basically to get the updates from those tabs, you have to make sure you click on this refresh. Other than that, this should be solid. So I'm going to go to partial data one. So you don't have to include every single line here to make this work. So if I did like NV here, just adding one state in the middle, I'll just go ahead and add a number on this second table and I'll go ahead and add another let's say brand to this dirt table. So if I go back here and simply just click refresh, so see that's that new record from that table. This is that record from the second table. And this is that record from the third table. All of them nicely combined on a single tab. And there you have it. That's our power query. And that's how we can actually combine multiple tabs in Excel to a master sheet. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.